Hey guys, welcome to the London Lift Podcast. Today we have a thought-provoking and fun episode for you. Hey, they're all going to talk about. What are you talking about? They're all fun. fun. <laughs> they're all thought-provoking as well. <laughs> um, hopefully, <laughs> but uh, today the topic is: if we started from scratch, how would we train? How would we do things differently to what we have actually done in our training history? So we're going to discuss the pros and cons of a few different schools of thoughts of training, and yeah. I think this is a great episode for anyone evaluating what they want from their training and also potentially parents for how they're going to mold their child to be what they the wish next. they were. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, but before we get into it, as always, a big thank you to our show sponsors, thetrainingstimulus.com. Please check out the website if you're interested in learning more about movement mechanics. wit-fitness.com. Use our discount code LL15 to get 15% off your purchase. And Hytro, use discount code LL20 to get 20% off your blood flow restriction apparel. Ash. Rob. I got you first, Ash. All right. So got <laughs> I got in, I've got in there. What was you like as a kid? Was you sporty? Yeah, yeah, I've always been sporty. I think having an older brother, we would always just play in the street, in the garden, and there's always some form of yeah, sporting activity going on, whether it's just football in the garden. Um, we actually played roller hockey for a bit. Oh, really? Just in the, ro- in the road. Yeah, yeah, I think my parents bought us some rollerblades and hockey sticks. Yeah, um, I did that. Which was loads of fun. And yeah, everything, tennis, cricket, rugby, whatever sort of ball sport our parents could give us access to, we would just play on our own in the garden with our friends at school. So yeah, I think I've been very fortunate in that respect that my love of sport started at a very young age and having an older brother gave me a, I think a bit, I think having an older brother or an older sibling is a big advantage on the sporting front because you're forced to play at a level beyond yeah. your age. Um, so yeah, I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. I mean, as a kid, like, it's funny because when we, when we spoke about the, like doing this episode, it, it, I've already done this reflection exercise so many times from when we had Chloe. Um, also, just when I've thought about my own training in general, and I'm just like, fuck, just imagine if I started this when I was younger. Um, yeah. But like, for me, I think when I then reflected on what did I do as a kid, I was not I was an active kid. I did always do shit. I cycled a lot. So I, I BMXed everywhere. Um, and there was a lot of hills where I was living and stuff. And I was always playing out, climbing trees, doing boy shit, you know, doing stupid stuff, falling out of trees, getting hurt, digging stuff, carrying stuff. Like I was always very functional, shall we say. If we had, yeah. we had to put a, a today's term on it, it was a very functional way of living because I was very active in everything and do, put my body into all sorts of shapes and positions. But what I realized is because I lacked decent hand-eye coordination or foot-eye coordination. I was terrible with ball sports because I didn't mm. have that. So I took up guitar as because I was something I like to like to do. And I then was, was kind of like geared away from team sports, mainly because of like injury and stuff like that. And because I was focusing on the guitar at the time, it was like, okay, you probably don't want to do sports because you're going to get hurt and you won't be able to play guitar and so forth. Obviously, they're not giving up the guitar, but they're not having a focus on that and wishing that I'd done sports now is a different scenario. But... It was fascinating because now the way I've looked at Chloe and said, right, what what did I do wrong as a kid? And not necessarily even what did my parents do wrong, but what did I not want to dive more into and what could I expose her to? And that was one thing I think, as you put it there, mm. not what I didn't do or what I want her to be, but I just want to make sure she's exposed to certain things because I've because of how the fitness industry and like the world of fitness has evolved so much just in the last, say, 10 years that I've been in it, and the same as you, right? So the fact, the time that we've been in it, it's evolved tenfold. It's been, it's mm. insane. And if we now knew what we knew now, which is the whole <laughs> yeah. point of this episode, do you, do you know what I mean? And this is obviously what we yeah. want to get into today because it's, it's it's fascinating. You just think, and it's, and it's because you can see things playing out already because just using the sport of CrossFit as an example, you're now seeing... 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds doing some things that you're like adults weren't doing like five years ago. Like, yeah. and it's, and you're like, these guys are, and girls are gonna still got time to grow. And then you're seeing now people yeah. in the top flight, like your Hayley Adams, your Mau O'Brien, who's 17. You're like, 
just, just come in second. And you're like, yeah. it's insane. The second fittest in the world at CrossFit. And she's 17. <laughs> you're like, yeah. mind-blowing. Exactly. I think things have come along so far that actually, because we know so much more about the way things can or potentially should be done, we can expose younger and younger athletes to them. Mm. So given the amount we've learned over the years, what do we wish we'd done differently? Or yeah, if we started from scratch, how would we lay the foundations for what we wish we were today? Mm. And um, the way I could have thought about this one, like what are we actually considering here? So for me, any sort of training should unlock capabilities. <clears throat> so what types of fitness do we want to unlock and have and possess? What's the effect on the body? So what adaptations does it drive? What skills do you develop? Um, also, like, what do you enjoy? Like, what sort of movement, training, sport, exercise is actually fun to you? And <clears throat> what's its wider role in your life? So what does it give you outside of the actual training? Not just from a physical capability point of view, but in terms of longevity or community, those sort of less tangible aspects to um, what goes alongside sport training or exercise. So um, I'm just going to list out things that pop to mind. I think something I wish I did a lot more of younger was sprinting, jumping and like, agility work. I think they're real fundamental forms of athleticism which have carry over to pretty much all sports even stuff like weightlifting massively benefits from sprinting and jumping the ability to create force explosively generate power and yeah it's it's very it's a very useful type of strength mm. and all field sports being fast is a huge advantage and being able to change direction quickly and effectively is a huge advantage. It also has massive carryover into the physiological side of things in terms of bone density, because you're able to put a lot of force into the ground, your bones actually become stronger. And because of those great forces, your connective tissues get a great stimulus. And it's, it's a much lower risk environment to be doing this when you're small, because you are lighter, there are lower forces involved. And obviously, your body adapts faster as well. So your tendons and ligaments can actually develop nice and proportionally as you get bigger, as compared to somebody who say they never sprinted and they start at age 30, there's a lot mm. higher degree of risk involved because those connective tissues won't have leveled up and they, they do take longer to adapt than just your muscles. Yeah. So that's a fundamental one for me, sprinting, jumping and agility work. It's funny because when I then, when I read yours of that, for me as a when i was in school probably around so i'm high school now so you think about years probably eight or nine probably time been a bit warped in my head and i don't know what year it was but around that mm. sort of age i remember sports days and like for me those sort of events i was well happy with like i was really good at sprinting i was deep like decent at, um hurdles like for me like that i was i was fast and i was powerful which then mm take when I think about what type of person I am now and kind of see what traits have kind of stayed around of just like and how they're probably impacted my lifting career later down the line it's interesting to kind of see some of the parallels there and it's and how like but I kind of want to loop back to something that you mentioned earlier and like for me one of the reasons why I want to get Chloe into like team sports of some sort is more for like the social side being yep. able to talk to other people so when you mentioned about things that are not necessarily tangible is in like measures or metrics of things it's just being able to talk to other people being able to communicate with something else someone else and work as a team and i think exactly. that's and when i then think about some of my flaws i've been very individual over the years and because everything i've always been done has been on me to do mm all the way through because I haven't been a team sport person and it's, it's it's crazy to just have that kind of reflection and just think fuck I fucked up no but, yeah, but it's, it's I'm joking but it's a, do you know what I mean it's just like it is, it's, it's yeah. interesting because some, most of the time people just don't reflect which is fine it is what it is but when you do sometimes you have a little bit of reality thing just like fuck that's like you can you can watch the patterns emerge and just see that lead to that led to that and that makes sense now and it's yeah i mean for me i i when i when i think about chloe just 
and I try and think because that she's now my little project essentially and <laughs> beyond the child and that and my my son to son to be that you know I will just try to expose them to as much like when they want to run and jump and do all this stuff to climb and stuff to being a kid to just let them because you see what kids are like nowadays and they're not doing that and you're just like I don't want my kids to be like that and but yeah. again I want to make sure that I don't force that upon them but hopefully mm. they'll be learning from my example of seeing training lifting and me just like letting them do shit that they actually get exposure to these things because as you just said there if you can start developing the connective tissue and the explosive strength at a young age it's really going to benefit them later in life massively yeah i think <clears throat> i echo your thoughts on team sports as well i think that's something i really loved when i was younger was playing sports especially rugby i think rugby for me mm. is a massive it's it's better from a teamwork perspective than most other sports because the difference between positions is so significant you're forced to work collaborative collaboratively with people who are actually quite different types mm. of athlete to yeah. you because there's so much distinction between like a prop and a scrum half or a winger everyone has their own personal strengths and weaknesses but the way the team does best is if everybody does things to the yeah cohesively to the strengths of the team overall as opposed to what suits them so you might like to do certain things more than others but you will do the things you don't like because it makes sense for the team in that moment and i think that's actually a really valuable life lesson yeah. to understand how to work in a team with other people that it's not just about you you can't just focus on what you want or what you like um you sometimes have to roll your sleeves up and do the dirty work and cover for your mate and all those sorts of lessons are really really beneficial outside of the sport as well yeah and i think that was when i had the exposure to rugby league so i had like one or two games of rugby union but rugby league just the reality of started that when i was like what 24 i think around that sort of age 24 25 uh, probably a total, I didn't play loads essentially, but about four seasons worth of sporadic games when I wasn't getting concussed and injured and stuff <laughs> like that. But beyond that, like I loved it. The team mentality, the playing, and as you said, you know, working for the person next to you. Like So with yeah. Rugby League, the, and why I loved it, because it was a, it was a lot simpler. I mean, you had six goes to run up the pitch and work as hard as you can. The first three goes, basically going to be the props, the big lads, you've got to do the work and get the most metres. Then the other lads have got to do it. But with league, obviously, you do the tackle if you're tackling. Um, and then you have to run back. So you have to make sure you're always making back your 20 metres. Uh, no, 20 metres, 10 metres. Make sure you run back your 10 metres so that you don't get a penalty or anything like that. So as a, you might be feeling gassed and stuff like that, but you have to step up. You have to work. Otherwise, you're going to cause a penalty and cause then the other, person, other team to get an opportunity to win. And as you say, it's like those little lessons of working as a unit and not as a solo person can really benefit you later in life in all aspects beyond just the pitch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, I think rugby as a sport, I'm really glad that I played a lot of it. Um, but the other sports that I wish I played more of when I was younger, maybe niche in England, is basketball. And given I'm not super tall. Um, <laughs> but I think in terms of all-round athleticism mm. and... Um, yeah, being, becoming a sportsman, I find basketball players incredibly impressive because they possess so many impressive traits yeah. physically. So they're fit, they're fast, they're agile, but they're also highly skilled and have immense hand-eye coordination as well as a lot of the team teamwork characteristics we just discussed. So I think if you learn to play basketball at a young age, your overall athleticism, which can carry over into a lot of other endeavors is greatly stimulated i almost wish it was more of a thing in england mm. um, because it does it's very demanding on the body and yeah. i think a lot of people struggle to pick it up later in life because of that but like i say if you started younger having that agility and hand-eye coordination is is a really big asset yeah i always got really bad blisters whenever i play basketball because i've been yeah. running like because of the change of direction constantly my feet would just get absolutely trashed so but i loved it i did i did it as like when i played it in school it was it was good fun but it wasn't that great so i'd always i'd always just 
use my my uh my size to muscle people off the ball and end up just falling all over the floor and stuff because I just <laughs> lacked so much coordination. But I think something that I feel that kind of not necessarily if I started from when I was a kid, but even if I started my fitness when I started my fitness journey, that I found say powerlifting and I just stuck with it. Because mm. if, say, 10 years ago, when I pretty much when I started properly lifting, don't get me wrong, I dabbled with bits and bobs like bodybuilding stuff here and there. But if I found powerlifting 10 years ago and I actually stuck to it, like just solely that, how strong would I be now or where would I be now? But at the same time, why I don't really ever have a massive negative thought towards my journey is because I've experienced so much, I've been able to kind of see what I haven't and what I haven't don't like. So because mm-hmm. that that's also something which is like, it's funny because it's a, it's a double-edged sword, right? You can hyper-specialize into something and become really, really good at it, but then not know what you're missing. And then you yeah. might be missing something that's actually the thing that, that you was meant to do because you have for enjoyment and everything. So then you have to weigh up as in like, what are you what are you doing this all for, right? It's quite a deep question. Yeah, exactly. I think the hyper-specialization is tough, especially... If- as a kid, when you don't know what you like and where you want to go in future, which is why I think my focus is on traits that have a lot of carryover. Mm. So almost any direction you go in, if you did sprinting, jumping and agility work when you're younger, almost all sports would benefit from yeah. that. If you played basketball and rugby, almost all other sports will benefit, especially team sports. And that sort of leads into one of my other things is like gymnastics and tricking and parkour i think those are incredibly impressive um, when done well and the things that they give you also carry over massively into almost all sports and athletic endeavors in that you learn full body coordination you're able to move yourself through space really efficiently and gracefully in all three of those disciplines and in the episode we had with hunter one of the things he said that really resonated was fitness largely comes down to your ability to transport yourself through time and space Mm. and parkour is essentially making that into almost an art form what sort of obstacles can you navigate how can you get over really high walls how can you jump over fences how can you do all these crazy things and if you if you develop those skills the world actually becomes a different place yeah imagine if you're a cat like they look at the world completely differently (laughs) to how a human looks at the world right because they know they can jump up this they can jump down from that. yeah so it's a playground it becomes a playground yeah exactly and just imagine in your suit and tie scaling up the side of a wall because you could it was quicker yeah (laughs) Exactly. I think that's amazing. And what what an what an amazing skill set to take through life. You know, yeah. You just think, oh, this this alleyway is closed. Doesn't matter. I'm just gonna go over <laughs> jump it. Jump over the fence. I love it. Yeah. I love that. And I, I think that's why, like, for me, like gymnastics, when I took on gymnastics later, probably around twenty twenty six, twenty seven, and it gave me such a good understanding of again, learning where my body is in space and time that I was able to do a lot of, say, CrossFit stuff because I started to learn a lot more the fundamentals of what my body shapes were doing and how how a body shape would give me this much strength or power or this or that. And it's it was really interesting. But then I also had 100 kilos slamming into the floor when I was trying to do a front flip and stuff like that. So again, when we go back to that thing of like the connective tissue, the bone density and stuff, like the amount of stress going through my joints when I didn't land it correctly, it, it was a lot. And it's like, no wonder I ended up with like, knee pain, elbows pain, because it was a big stress on the body. And as everything, don't really do things half assed But I one of the one of the ones that you put down there, which is one of the like the key traits when I think about my son to be born, that I want him to be able to have like party tricks and stuff. So when he's <laughs> older, because whenever you've got someone that can do something that's different to everyone else, you're like, fuck, he just flipped over that thing. Or like or Hannah, remember a whip. Because she was yeah. one of the only people who could do like front flips, and you're just like, she did all these like hand and front flips, just picked up CrossFit really well. And you're just like, it's yeah. just so different, but it's so cool. It's so cool yeah. to see. And it's like, so then you're in your social life, not that you're the clown because you can do shit for everyone else and entertain them, but it is, it's, it's great entertainment. And because it is in yeah. that cool little thing that you can do that other people can do. So it's clout. And as a kid, clout is key. 
that, that's your currency, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, and it's just like we were talking about at the start, it's fun. Like mm. if you can just do a standing backflip, that's pretty fun. That's pretty cool. Um, just means that anytime you celebrate anything, you've got <laughs> an ace up your sleeve. Yeah. <laughs> Score a goal in five sides, backflip. I yeah. Mean, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Martial right, what's arts. Next? Martial arts. Martial arts. Yeah, it's funny because as I said, as I mentioned earlier, like a lot of these a lot of these I've are the exact ones that I've either thought wish I did or that I'm thinking about for my say daughter my daughter and my son to do that is because I'm like what has what has become to the forefront that I think oh do you know what if they had that ability to do this that would be really cool and when it comes to martial arts like I did karate as a kid and I'm like how much did that really benefit me now eh, probably not really anything because I don't remember much of it but when I think about and you see what's popularized now with wrestling BJJ like obviously ufc and stuff not necessarily to that degree but yeah. doing that type of combat sport and having again being able to use your body and own someone else just for self-defense is is key because you know as as people are getting more and more reckless nowadays so you want that's your ace up your sleeve that someone comes at you you don't want to do something and you you don't know who you're talking to right next thing you know you're on the floor being choked out you're like oh shit i better, I better watch what i'm doing <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I think for me, there's lots of positive sides to doing combat sports. Um, I think with most of the traditional martial arts, there's a huge amount of discipline and respect mm. that's built into the culture. So if you go to a, any good dojo or training facility, that's really, really important. Just, you know, little things like... Um, cleaning the mats and all those sorts of things. Yeah, I think yeah. they're great lessons for life and also respecting hierarchy. I think if you go as a white belt and you're, you're sparring with a black belt, it's very clear what's going on. And yeah. I think as even it goes the other way around as well, like as a black belt, how are you going to interact with people several belts below yeah. you? I think, you learn a lot of grace and well, the white belt has to learn humility, but the black belt, you know, they could essentially do whatever they want to the white belt because they're so much better at the martial arts, but I guess it will teach them patience and the ability to teach. And, um, I think appreciation for the art of learning as well. Like as you level up, are you just going to abuse what you know to enjoy beating up white belts or actually are you invested in the pursuit of constant development? Are you going to be practicing new techniques and ironing out weaknesses? And I think on the surface, they can be perceived as quite um, thuggish and like, yeah. oh, you just want to learn to beat people up. But actually there's so much depth to them and there's so many great character character traits that get developed through doing these martial arts that I would have loved to have started when I was much younger. Um, and the athleticism that goes with them as well. Like if you look at kickboxers, they're incredibly agile, flexible, and coordinated to be able to land their strikes, mm. um, which again has great carryover to other sports. Yeah, and for me, it's like, have, having a girl want to make sure she knows how to protect herself because there are some dickheads out there and you know there's also when it comes to a guy you know at the end of the day you never know when you're in a situation that you can't handle yourself and that's that's always the thing that you just think those sort of things are just like as I, as I alluded to before and you did like the ace up your sleeve like it's knowledge and having that and for me I think the the respect side of stuff I think is really key because we're all kind of getting brought down at the moment or everyone is equal. And it's like, to some degree that is right, but there is a hierarchy across the board in certain things, whether that's you working for for someone. So if you work for someone, there's gonna be a level of command up the chain. When you're at school, unfortunately there is, you know, there's teachers and then there's head teachers and stuff like that. There's always a form of command that's going up the level. And as you said, understanding how to deal with people up and down it's like when you get to middle management and people have like people that are really shit yeah. at managing people because they get the shit coming down from them and then they give that shit back down to them and it's like no no yeah. you don't go down you what you you're the one that's going to take all the shit you have to then 
digest that <laughs> and work out yeah. what little bits of productive stuff can you go down below to make sure that you don't get as much shit next time. Because at the end of the day, yeah. it does stem from the bottom up because that's how it's come about. But you have to understand from the top down how to make sure it doesn't come back the other way. And <laughs> having that level of respect for everyone around you. And for me, it just when I see people, when, when I used to see people in the gym not tidying their stuff away, you're just like that's just basics and i just think it is you're right cleaning the mat you're not going to leave your sweat all just all spewed across the mat just not same as like if you've done a workout in the gym and you've got a load of sweat that because i'm a sweaty bastard so when i, when I do any type of cardio i clean up the machine afterwards because i don't want to leave that for someone else to have to use and it's just yeah it's, it's fundamental fun life lessons right they really really are and i and it's it's funny because it's like i as i mentioned earlier i wouldn't really change anything that i've done because again, that's the type. That's what's developed me into the person I am now. But what I, what we kind of wanted from, or what I would like you to get from this episode, is kind of maybe to look back and kind of think, okay, what what would you have done, change, or what would you change? But then also, what are you doing right now to think maybe you can start something else? Maybe you're on the right track and you're actually doing the right thing. But have a little evaluation of what your current training style is. Is it something that you truly want to be doing? Or is it you've just fallen into the classic, oh, I go to the gym, do chest or push day, and I just do because I think it's the right thing to do. Is it yeah. actually what? And are you afraid to not go and join like a five-a-side team or something like that, just actually start mingling with other people? And it's like, reflect, because it's, it's quite a hard thing to do, to actually ask yourself those honest questions and think like, is this the right? And you can do that obviously in every area of your life, right? And it's sometimes it becomes a bit reality. You're just like, Fuck, it's like even with jobs, right? That's why we both were doing a job and we got into fitness because we yeah. were both like, this isn't for us. And some people just, they say this isn't for us, but they stay there because it's, they have to pay the bills and whatever like that and they don't, they can't take that risk. Then it is what it is. But with something like your fitness, you could always develop your fitness in other areas. So just maybe have a little reflection period and say, what is it I could maybe try that's a little bit different that might actually benefit me? And why are you going to pick that? Yeah. Well said, mate. Love it. Cheers. <laughs> Nothing else then, really, with that. But that was my no, my little mic ending drop. piece. Yeah, that was my mic drop moment. So, guys, we hope we have maybe sparked a little interest in your mind now to maybe have a little reflection period, get a notebook out, have a little write down, or maybe just have a little sit on your notes and have a little type. But it's just about not doing things mindlessly, right? That's It's very easy to get carried away in life with all the distractions that are going on around you. And when something like fitness, which is hopefully something that you're doing as a hobby, that's fun that you should be doing because you're trying to improve yourself. Don't just follow what everyone else is doing. And that comes from, even I say it to myself, because it's very easy to get caught up in that. And it's like when I was playing around with some of the, like some unconventional stuff the other week and how it's just, it's not the norm. So you looked at why are you just being stupid? But well, because it's fucking fun. I thoroughly mm. enjoyed it. And you're like, that's what you have to ask yourself and then that's why you should follow what you enjoy not what you think everyone else should yeah. expect you to be doing exactly and it gives you what you want i think yeah. that's the other thing like if you know what you want you know what the type of fitness the fitness characteristics and traits that you want to develop are then maybe you do have to do things differently mm -hmm. i think you know a lot of a lot of training can be can look very different like i think Silly lunges would be a great example mm. of that. It looks very different to what most people are doing, but if you understand what they can do for you and how it's going to develop your body, then you get the buy-in as to, okay, this is actually giving me what I want. I want to be able to move like this, so I need to do something that's slightly different to what everyone else is doing. And fundamentally asking yourself that question, like what sort of fitness do I want? What, what, where do I want my training to take me? And once you can answer that, then it does make things a lot simpler. So that's enough from uh, the two gurus over here. Thank you life very coaches. much. Yeah, the two live coaches. Thank you very much for today. We hope you we you have taken a bit from today and we hope that it does, as I said, spark a little bit of a, a thought-provoking uh, little period now for you to kind of mm. sit back and digest. As always, thank you. We hoped that you enjoyed this and we will see you next week. Thanks, guys.